I'm here to talk about 10 scale with this guy over here, Tony Newland of Clinic RC. That guy down there, RC Kevin. This is 10 scale. Like we, we're actually doing a podcast dedicated to 10 scale, but it was a great race this weekend and we are trying to report more on races. So, hey, welcome to the, I guess we're going to call this the Monday night wrap up of the weekend. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, let's drop that intro. <laughs> Nitro is the glory. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast with your host tonight, Keenan White, aka Lefty the Great. And if you are unlucky, the Finnish Village Idiot, JQ. This is the RC Podcast with no name, but plenty of content. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some serious bench racing. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro is the glory, but E Buggy pays the bills. Well, tonight, Ten Skill is uh, paying the bills. So, uh, I'm your host, Keena White, aka Left It Great, and this is the NNRC podcast. And we, he's been on the podcast before, but to my left is uh, we've become good friends. We talk about RC every day now, Tony. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and then I introduced him to Kevin down below because we're just, we just going to watch this race together. They have a bromance going on now. <laughs> <laughs> and but uh we're all together because these are my 10 scale friends i leave all knowledge of 10 scale to them but we had a great race this past weekend at uh, in florida at the florida carpet championships so i figured hey let's get these guys on let's talk about it thank you tony of clinic rc thank you kevin of rc kevin uh what's up guys real quick and then we'll go on and say thank you to everybody not that much Just- Watched a ton of video over the weekend, the racing. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was. was. How about you, Kevin? How are you? You just did a live, and now you're on here, so thank you for your time. My pleasure. I raced over the weekend, uh, took a look at the amazing track and uh, coverage. So, uh, yeah, it was a busy weekend. Yeah, it was. uh, I was watching you guys chatting. I know I kind of wasn't involved too much. I was kind of chilled out this weekend, but I did. Opinion love, man. Yeah, no, but I, you, well, we'll get into that because it kind of, you know, we'll get into coverage and all that type of stuff. But we are here to talk specifically about the Florida Carpet Championships. This is something we're looking to do uh, in the future as, as well in 2022. If there's a big race that weekend, we're trying to get the recaps in on the Monday. So it's fresh on people's minds. So thank you to everybody for tuning in. And before we do that, I got to come. I got to thank everybody. So shout out and say thank you to the, all of the NNRC squad around the world. Without you guys, we couldn't do this. All the love that you're showing us has allowed us to be here for three years, over 150 episodes, and honestly, we can't do it without you, so thank you to all of the people that listen to the podcast around the world. Also, I'd like to say thank you to all of the patrons of the podcast. Without you guys helping to keep these bills paid, we can continue to do this, so thank you as well. Uh, if you wish to be a patron, you can. Uh, the link is in the written description of this podcast. And of course, we have sponsors, and without them, we can... Uh, we can't operate it each either. So please remember, showing the sponsor some love shows the podcast some love. They are Mayako, Beach RC, High Tech RCD, TNR Fuels, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, JQ Scale Motorsports, Sun City RC Raceway, InvisibleSpeed.com.net, sorry, Donathan RC, their charge leads are awesome. Check them out. Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, some of the best uh, traction compound in the market. Racecraft USA, get pitted. Shop JTP.com. Jared Tebow's new shop. Check him out as well. He's becoming a regular co host of the uh, one time, co- sorry, once a month co host of the podcast. RCGP D4 is coming. I saw a little preview of it. It's coming very soon. So I'm excited about that. Uh, House of RC, so dialed app. Hey, check out Clinic RC at clinicrc.com. Correct, Tony? Yep, that's it. Uh, check out their line of products for 10 scale cars, and he's coming out. There you go. Uh, he's also got some some eight scale stuff in the works. And of course, my good buddy, RC Kevin, who has joined us quite a lot. 
I would like to thank him for his time and his effort. If you guys can go to his Instagram, to his Facebook, and to his YouTube, give him a like, hit that follow button. I know he does most of his stuff in French, but I promise he's I promise. supposed to be, you know, cross platform. Pretty cool English over. stuff coming out. All right. So, hey, remember, if you guys can show their sponsors some love, it really helps us. Thank you. We appreciate it. We thank them for their support. And 2022 is looking promising. So, I'm excited for that. All right, gentlemen. So, we decided to have a look at this race because, one, let's just be honest, this is the biggest contingent of, of, Europeans that we've seen come to America in a long time due to COVID. So we had a strong contingent of carpet racers from Europe come over to uh, converge on this, this, which is becoming like one of the biggest carpet races in the world right now, I would say. In the size of prestige, it's becoming very prestigious, especially to get the, the Europeans over. It did not disappoint. I thought it was exciting. The facility is beautiful. Uh, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, let's geek out on this for a little bit. Um, so how we'll start is I always like to talk, talk on the track. Tony, have you been to this track yet? No, I haven't. I haven't been to it. Where are you uh, in the U.S. of A., uh, Tony? I'm in Utah. Oh, that's that's pretty decent drive. So I'm kind of like in close to California, mm -hmm. like probably six to eight hour drive to California. He's closer Vegas to California than any of us. That's for sure. Yeah, pretty much. Vegas is like five hours, so that's oh, that's not, not bad. bad at all. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. I got to watch this last year a little bit. Uh, I think this is. I, I know a couple of guys in Florida. This seems to be one of the premier carpet facilities in the USA. It it reminds me of like an EOS race, man. That's all I kept thinking while I'm looking at this EOS carpet, EOS style race facility. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on the track? Excuse me. And the actual facility. I'll start with you, Tony. It looks amazing. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, I watched the video when everybody was waiting outside, and then they opened the door, like kind of like Reedy over mm -hmm. the years. Um, and I think it's Robbie, the guy that owns the track. Uh, he was standing out there, and he's he before they opened the doors, he was like, "We've redone the whole track, new everything." new it's like a new facility for this race so they definitely put a ton of work into it you know and it shows it, it the place is awesome yeah i mean i think we when we were first talking about this race i was like this is gonna be like the carpet worlds you mm -hmm. know i mean and it's a incredible facility i i mean i don't even know if i'd change anything about it you know <laughs> it looks awesome even you know you know my wife and she's not into the racing itself but when she saw the video she's like that place is beautiful yeah. you know i mean it's yeah it's great it looks good nice place yeah definitely reminds it, it so reminds me of eos so reminds yeah. me kevin what about you you you're a dirt guy predominantly I, and i know you do some car but well, you guys do you do any carpet racing up there in quebec yeah we we just had a new carpet track open up at uh, bego racing um, I think it was a world class facility. It was amazing to see uh, Euros. I think carpets is the biggest equalizer because you know on dirt there's secret sauce, uh, tire prep, and all that jazz. On carpet, it's high traction. Obviously, there's always a couple of trade secret, but I, I do think it's one of the best equalizers. You travel half halfway around the world, there's a good chance that you'll be in the good window for setups. And it's going to be easy to, to get on the track. So I, I do think that's a, one of the best way to, to have people travel. Um, it was a huge, a huge surface. It was really awesome. Um, I'm curious. I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about that uh, later. But like carpet, I think it's one of the best ways to bring back tracks. You know, there's people that have been closing down because of humidity of tenants and having a rough, uh, rough go at finding the right uh right place to, to do a, a dirt uh, track carpet's going to be so much easier. It's uh, it was really interesting. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of people are against carpet and it's not real off road and real off road. Is it on slicks <laughs> and whatnot? But I do think that that opened people's eyes and it was, uh, it was such a good show and a good quality track that people are like, okay, we can probably do something pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, 
All right, we're gonna we might as well just tackle that right now <laughs> because it's one of our topics for later on. But we 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 can all agree that we think that this is going to be um, probably the future for ten scale in in the world. I would say in the world because it's already big in Europe, and 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 that's when I got hip to it back in two thousand and fourteen. And I'm over there, and I I watched them unroll and put up a track in thirty minutes. Rostrum track laid out. You and and you cannot beat that. And and. I see that more and more now, like temporary tracks, maybe in in church halls, school halls, and stuff like that. And honestly, this is the only way we're going to really grow racing because one, it's easy to set up tracks, and we 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 got you can get a different track every every week or every time you make a new track. It's less maintenance for the track for the actual facility for people, all this type of stuff. People can look. I, I get it. People like it's not traditional. Well, I don't think we're going back all outdoors and going to have spikes and lerm either at any as much as I would like to see that once in a while. I don't think we're going to get back to that. And <clears throat> I get it. There's people that like clay as well. But as that becomes just more difficult, the tire game is something that people keep just not wanting to be a part of. I think this is just the great like this is the way like I'm sorry. This is the way to to grow our in our racing. Yeah. Yes. People think they want high grip dirt and they want all this stuff. And when you go to a race that's like that, like you said earlier, where, or I think Kevin said it, where you show up and there's some secret sauce and all this crap, you know, I mean, that's all the things that they don't tell you when you sign up for high grip, you know, and I've been there, I've seen it. And I've seen guys come here to our track and we have a way of treating the tires here that works. And if you don't tell them, they're not going to do very good. I don't care who it is. It's just, they're just not going to do very good because it's been honed for so long. They're not just going to stumble on it in the weekend, you know? So yeah, I think the carpet thing, I agree with you is like the equalizer mm -hmm. because if you're a good driver, like, we talked about a little bit earlier, you, you can be a good driver. You're not going to set the track on fire with lap times, but you'll do really well if you can put in lap after lap after lap, you know, 15 minutes without a mistake, you're going to be a beast in the race. You know, it's not always about that super fast lap. I mean, Dakota killed it. You know, he was running some ridiculous two wheel drive lap times mm -hmm. and he held it together, you know, all weekend. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bet that he did. He could because it's just so hard mm -hmm. for that pace, you know, but he did. But there's other guys that made the main like Brent. I mean, we can all agree he's not a traveling paid professional. But he made That's the main his, over guys. Yeah. Who do he that made for the main. Living. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, carpet, I think, I think it's the future for the same reasons as it's been the normal in Europe, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I, I, if you look at the UK, they just race all year round on carpet, you know, and astroturf, yeah. and that's the only thing they can do. So I think yeah. it's like inevitable. Like, it's like people fighting the, the truggy, ruggy bodies. Like it's inevitable. It's going to happen, mm. but it's going to be yep. a beneficial of to our industry and to our hobby. What about you, Kevin? I know you're a big proponent of this as well. I, I try and uh, simplify. Well, I try and bring newcomers to RC, and it, it's funny because I'll um, I'll touch base on a personal story. Uh, two weeks ago, so I told you we just opened a, a new carpet track. We decided to move to a. a not a spec tire, but everybody has to be on slicks instead of be on pins. It's going to be cheaper. And there's just uh, one guy that's becoming a friend now. Um, he practiced two or three times, bought a two wheel, bought a four wheel, uh, just was having a really horrible time on dirt because his car wouldn't hook up. It was uh, very finicky. Showed up on, uh, on carpet, put tires on, then change a thing on setup. And he was able to do laps and have fun. You know, so it, it just, it simplifies so many things for track owners, racers. It's, um, it's easy. 
And, you know, the more and more new chassis are coming out, everything's going for high grip, um, like the B6.3 or B6.3D. Like the, even the dirt car is made for high grip. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it on semi-medium grip, you have to, to play around with it. And for people in Florida driving at Newberry or these huge outdoor tracks, these cars are not are, are complicated to adapt. Like you got to watch what Ray Monday does and Dremel this, Dremel that, push the washer here and play around with so many things. So the more and more new chassis were coming out, um, the more and more the platforms are, are easy to get into carpet and a bit more complicated on dirt. You got to play a tire game and everything. So it's less costly for the owner, less costly for uh, a racer, less complicated. So what what's left, you know? OCRC was one of the biggest stable in, in RC and they're closing down. What is that group going to do? Are they going to change the carpet or try and find a, a place where they can do dirt again? It's If I had to put money out of my pocket, I definitely do carpet. Mm-hmm. It's easier to build a track, cheaper on track changes. You don't need machinery. It's it's not dirt, mm-hmm. but it's a lot more simple for for everyone. You know. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. The, the only thing I think carpet does or Astro does is build. Uh, I hate to say this, it builds a false sense of speed elsewhere. Yeah. So um, I've seen many people that really like carpet. But they come to a maybe they want to cross over the e buggy or eight scale and it's completely different, and and that's fine. But they're just so used to the traction, you know what I mean. And yeah. with when you get out on dirt, that's the only issue. Now that's if you really and, and that's fine if you just want to race carpet. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, um, that's the only thing. I, that my only gripe that I have with it. I'm kind of over the hill trying to be a purist and go back to old school type. Dirt, you've, all that stuff. you've changed. You've changed. Well, I just Keenan. understand that that's not going to happen. I would love to see it. I would love to see it happen again once in a while, but I just know it's, it's not, not going to happen. Yeah, because guys don't want to get their cars dirty. I, I just know it. Not the, yeah, no offense. Don't, not the don't, pink they, they don't want to get their. They don't want to get the the cars dirty. They don't want to have ruts that throw mm-hmm. the car out of the track just for whatever reason. Carpet's always the same. Mm-hmm. It's always grippy. It's always flat. Didn't this and track? It's the same. It's this. It's the same thing for eight scale and then ten scale. Why they're going to high grip and treated and sugar this and oil this and oil that? It's because it's less maintenance for the track crew and for the racer. So, yeah, I agree with you there, man. I agree with you there. I believe this track used to be up, and maybe I'm got this confused with another track. But didn't it used to be dirt covered with Astro at one it point? It used to be dirt. Mm-hmm. Then it got into clay. Then it got into clay with turf on it. Then it got to black carpet on dirt, I believe. And now it's completely carpet. That's it. Well, <laughs> it's it's good enough. All right. So it's good enough that it got a high uh, international presence this year. I think the best it's seen in any of the years previously. Uh, it, it was getting, I mean, it was getting a good turnout of American races over the last couple of years. I believe Brock won it last year and... I think people like Aiden went her and Cavs always go on her, it seems, too. Um, so we had the Europeans come over. I think we had, let's see, we had, uh, obviously we had, the biggest one would be Mike Orlowski. He came over, carpet specialist. Your Newman. Uh, Trish came over to do more mechanic work. And we had Martin Bear, Kobovic, uh, Daniel Kobovic. It's funny because they, they stated the Martin as a Canadian on uh, Live RC. Really? <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Well, Lance did br- br- mispronounce a lot of things. Primarily uh, Kaylee, Kaylee Ray RC. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, when Tony hears that, he's going to be upset. Mm. Because I will, it's, it's, I kept thought he kept, kept saying K-Link. You said Kaylee. But I can that's, understand why he yeah. says K-Link. I know why he says it because I thought it was K-Link too at first. I, uh, I didn't understand any of it at all. I actually chatted with Michael after that first driver's introduction. I was like, where's the call out, bro? And he's like, I did, I did. And, you know, so I went back and rewatched it. Yeah, and the best I could make out was Kaylee. It, you know? it, it does like, look like Kaylee, though. It took okay. me a while to figure out that it was clinic, but uh, it is <sighs> clinic. Lance, it's clinic, buddy. I know you can't get everything right. I need like a number, like number seven or something. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so we had a, a big contingent. X Ray sent their team over. Uh, Martin Byer, Ty Tasman State from AMS, Matt Gotzel, and um, Daniel Kobevink from Norway, and then this this gentleman that we, this young guy that we none of us even heard of, even Mattis. you two, yeah, Mattis, yeah. who done very well, uh, and um, wow, and then it was just good to see the Europeans back over, man. Honestly, yeah. And I it, I started it up USA versus Europe, and I have to say though that I think USA won this run. I think they yeah, did. They had they had the numbers too. Yeah. They, well, I mean, if you look in a two wheel drive, a, uh, a main there was only one one European, and that was Orlowski. And I think they should be more because they race on this a lot more. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so I was, I'm giving this right up. USA one, Europe zero. That's it. Next race is at DNC. <laughs> so <laughs> completely different guys. Yeah. Completely different yeah. It doesn't it's matter though. It's, I know, okay. I know. But and, um, on, it, it was great to see this. I think this is Arlowski. Arlowski's been here before. He's done Reedy and stuff like that, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, he had some. We did the we did the IAC. In uh, what 2019? Okay, 2018, 2019. We did that Vegas carpet race, and then yeah, he's done several radius. You know? Well, he, he, I was kind of expecting him to be a little bit better in two wheel drive. Um, but I think he had a crash in A3, which really, when I look back on it, that's put him in the back, and then it was just hard to get back up. And that, that really, really hurt him in this in the overall for two wheel drive. But yeah, amazing talent, man. Oh, wow. He was, I watched him in four wheel drive and then the two wheel drive. The Punisher's good, man. He's really good, like, really good on carpet. Amazing talent. Yeah. Yeah. He had the crash in A3, I think, cost him three spots, like on the overall two wheel, four wheel combined. Because Brock and Rivkin, I believe, tied and Brock beat him on fast round or something. And then Orlowski was one point behind, and I think, I think that A three he was in second and finished seventh or something. So I think that single crash cost him uh, top three overall. It was pretty tight though. So yeah, yeah, it, it, it happens. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think he was one that flew off the end of the straight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they weren't calling. The, too many of the crashes out and who did it or whatever, but I saw a Marshall run to the end of the straight right about when that happened. Yeah. Just for people who may be watching this video, uh, we are just streaming. I'm just putting old mains up on her. I do not own the rights to this. This belongs to uh, uh, WC. I don't know the owners of this, whoever owns this on live RC. Uh, uh, what did you think, Kevin, as uh, a fan coming to see so many European guys come over here and race against the North Americans? It was good to finally see some uh, Euro talent. It was good to see Ty, too, uh, doing a bit more 10 scale. Um, it's good to, to mix the pot, too. Uh, so it was good to see different talent. It was good to see them uh, finally come out. So the world is almost going back to normal. Um but yeah, it's it's really good to, to have uh, multiple talents. And again, I think if you're going to travel abroad or go so, go somewhere, I do think carp is the best option. Like you would ask me to spend a couple of grand to fly out to whatever race. Am I going to have the right tire? How am I going to have to prep them? What's the setup? Everything's so particular to every track, which this body just bring uh, gear diff oils and a couple of parts because you're going to hit the wall and smash your car and uh what tires work and that's it you know I, I do feel it's so much easier so hopefully it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and it's a oh i like think a, next year you're going to see a official, lot yeah yeah I i'm 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 trying to to figure out how i can fly there next year because that's the, i'm really going to try and be there next year because there's a amazing so we'll try and do some uh, english french uh, french content for you guys yeah that would be great i think also you're going to see a lot more europeans come over next year <clears throat> and uh, probably because this yeah. is going to just be a race that's on the calendar that has to be done it's going to be i think it's just going to end up being like a dnc 
or Reedy, but carpet version where you just have to. Are we going to see finally the Viking come back on carpet with his new uh, ten scale program? Yeah, that's. I have no idea what ten scale program he's going to run. So he he is serious about doing ten scale racing. So we shall see. Um, and just not even just not that. I mean, I had a buddy, uh, my buddy Brady. He's from up in the Pacific Northwest, and he went and did AMS. He did like the whole RC, like a two week RC life. He went and did AMS, and he made the finals up there. Congratulations to him! And then he went and did this right afterwards, and he made the finals in the indie race as well. So, not just for the pro guys, like some guys made this a complete RC trip, AMS, Nitro, and all that stuff, and then this. So, looks yeah, out pretty tough. good. A couple of other guys from the Northwest did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Johnson yes. and, and another, I think. Yeah, he did the AMS, made the mains, and come out here. <clears throat> yeah. Log- Logistic-wise, this must be pretty uh, pretty complicated to pack everything. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how they got everything done from, uh, if they flew from Pacific Northwest on. They might have drove, too. Uh, but <clears throat> it's good to see that, man. That means that this is races. That's perfect. Like you can do your, get your nitro fix and then come in here and do this. Like who wouldn't want to do that? All right. Uh, What's your thought on only a two wheel and four wheel drive? No stadium trucks. It's not enough. I don't think. What are you, are you there? Yeah, we're here. Tony. Yeah. What's your thought? So what's on your that? thought on uh, no stadium trucks and no other class than two and four wheel? Uh, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Gets to be too much. I think they. I think they did it right. They capped it at like what two forty or two fifty, mm-hmm. um, and uh, everybody got, I think, decent amount of practice. Uh, I think they even had practice after the races one day. Um, I don't know. I, none of the manufacturers really support truck. I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. I think what. Rivkin ran truck at the nationals and that was about the only pro. So he won, but it's, I don't know. Dakota truck. actually won in, I think he won two, four and stadium truck, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. But Sorry. even Spencer. at the nationals, it's just not a lot of people, you know? Yeah. I think this is more, like you said earlier, like the EOS, they mm-hmm. run two wheel, four wheel. That's it. You know? So there's no more EOS. So maybe this is the next EOS type of race, even go. though it that won't be a series. That but, race is over. Um, yeah. All right. So let's move on to one of the other big topics. Open tire. First time at this race, right? First time at any U.S. race, as far really? as I know. So yeah. explain the significance of that, please, Tony. There's, this is something that you brought up. Yeah. It, I don't know. I, I, I think it adds another element. And uh, it allows the pro guys to run their sponsors' tires. And I think it pushes the competition for all the brands in the end. Um, I wanted to see it because I wanted to see uh, all the, you know, all the tires duke it out, basically, Mm -hmm. and see who is the best. Everybody says they're the best. Let's see, you know, and it was pretty impressive to have one brand win two wheel and one brand win four wheel. So it is kind of split. Like, yeah, they are all pretty good, you know? Yeah. But, um, everybody has their, their strengths and uh, weaknesses. Yeah. So I, I do think that the fuzz bite is like the new thing compared to foam tires. It's amazing. But I do think that Proline and Schumacher have something um, very different for four wheel front, which mm-hmm. other manufacturers don't have. Yeah, they just recently updated the four wheel front too, so it's kind of new, um, new ish. But yeah, there's different theories. Like the J Concept fronts are more like a like a rib, like a stagger, yeah, and um, swaggers or whatever. And so that's more of like a st- straight ribs wedges. And, go ahead it was wedges so it's, yeah yeah and then the schumacher they have some of that and then they have pins so it's kind of like in between tire um so it's interesting to watch all the different designs run side by side you know some of them are off pace by a bunch and some of them are right there so it's kind of interesting that way 
for me at least, you know. Yeah, it well, it looked like it, it's. I mean, Dakota Fenn was on J Concepts, and then yeah. and obviously Arlowski was on Schumacher. So we did have the. I, I guess they're the two top carpet brands of tires in the world right now. I would guess, and then Berline would have their their stuff as well. So and they, hot race too. Oh yeah, hot race was there as well. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Yeah, this is there. Rossby yeah. too. Well, yeah, we forgot about them. Wow, yeah. so there is quite a few, well, not as many as it is in dirt, but there's definitely some contenders here for the, which makes it also simpler too, not so many companies involved. So um, what was the, what were the J Concepts guys going on on and what were the Schumacher guys going on on? Does anybody know? Yeah, um, I think uh, the two wheel, well, pretty much everybody was on Fuzzbite, which is their new uh, micro pin tire mm-hmm. um, for Schumacher. I don't know, Tony would probably know. Uh, cactus rears, uh, fusion two fronts on four wheel, and then uh, they actually had a new two wheel front tire they were just testing. Okay. Did anybody hear what uh, maybe Hot Race was running, or they just, they just they don't have to have they don't have carpet tires yet, right? Or they're still developing them? They do. They have a front and a rear for buggy, um, but maybe Ty had new things there. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Ty. Um, all right, so let's. I have to give some love to Stock Class, or as we now call it, as we're trying to change the name. That's one of our missions in 2022. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get into that, because I know Tony's gonna probably get in on his soapbox, and oh, no. I just want I just want to close the, the tire issue. Um, so the pro guys had open tires, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. I checked with the uh, organization because uh, I wasn't super sure. So the tire rule, and I'll quote uh, what they uh, respond to me on Facebook. I don't know who controlled their Facebook page, but it's super cool. And I chatted with him. So the tire rule for expert stock classes, I don't think that should be a, a name, um, are no slicks, no foam tires, and tires must be carpet pin tires. And for indie classes, it was uh, indie, uh, for indie tire, well, let me start that over again. For indie classes, it was a handout tire. Mm-hmm. That was not complicated to say. <laughs> J Concepts tire. Yes. Yeah. And no additives at all. Really? Like no on any tires. Yeah. Yeah. How do they police that? Can you just see it more on carpet or? Yeah, you can see the groove when mm-hmm. people are saucing and using additives for sure. Yeah. And actually, I, did, I noticed that Sunday and uh, uh, there was no groove whatsoever. Okay. Um, I was kind of watching maybe to see if there was going to be any groove, even though there wasn't additives. I wasn't sure if the black carpet would have a groove anyway, because the races that I've been to with black carpet, there's always been additives. So it's, it's a, it's a sauce soupy groove. So Mm -hmm. it's obvious. Okay. Yeah. You can't really see the difference on pins. It's it's a hard thing to describe. So on carpet, in my experience, this is just my experience. If you run on a carpet track, the tracks that I've been to that they run sauce consistently, the track has a groove of sauce around the track, all the way around the track. So in the sauce and out of the sauce, obviously, is way different condition. So you get right back to the super high bite dirt scenario where the groove's this wide, and the carrots are everything outside of that, mm-hmm. meaning you're going to spin out. So I don't like sauce. Me, mm-hmm. myself, I don't like sauce because I like races like this. Just like you said, Kevin, you can bring half a backpack full of tires and you're dialed for the whole weekend. That's it. Take take the brain damage out of it, you know? So Literally. Yeah. Literally. It is so much like... If you don't know if you're on the right tire or sauce or prep or anything, dude, it's going to mess with you all weekend. <laughs> Even if you are on the right stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, so It's crazy. I'm all right with the handout tire for the indie guys, too. Saves yeah, them a yeah. little bit. Um, and everybody has to play around with where. Yeah. Um, I actually did two official carpet races, and it was like my fourth race ever. I showed up to a JC race, drove from Montreal to Chicago. That was a 16-hour drive, and we only run mod here. 
So I wasn't aware of what stock was. So I showed up and I was in the same heat as uh, Alex K who uh, laughed me eight times in five minutes. <laughs> so anyways, that was one hell of a story, but it was a handout tire. So you just have to play with where, where are you going to put when, yep. and, uh, it's it's very equal, especially for guys that don't want to dump like two hundred and fifty bucks of tires uh, on a yeah. weekend. And and this track with no sauce, so it's the same mm-hmm. every time you hit the track. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, you can make changes to your car. You know, definitive definitively if that helped you or not. You know, it's just I think it's just so much better. Yeah, I would agree there. Uh, yeah, spec tire for Indy for them guys. Yeah. Open t- because I, I, I'm coming to all right. So that's gonna that's gonna segue into my next thing because I know this people's been beating my brain about this, but I can see that I watch stock or as we're gonna refer to it as spec mod now because we're trying to change the name. That's turn his name spec mod <laughs> thirteen five. Man, these guys are good. Like they're fast. It's uh-huh. exciting and there's 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 a lot of young guys. I have to bring up Brendan Schimmel because he's the one guy that I've noticed. He hit this stock. Uh, he hit the stock races hard this year. I talked to him and his dad. I, they obviously have a track there over in Coastal and all that stuff. But I, I love this because I keep saying this. Like, 10 scale has everything that I want. It has a, this the spec mod class would be intermediate or the amateurs, pro semi-pro, I would say, almost. Not even semi, but amateurs. Uh, we, we had it here. Oh, open pro would be now mod which would be what it's supposed to be, the pro guys or semi-pro guys who are just on the cusp of making a living of it. Spec mod will be stock, which is which is stock now. And then stock would be actual stock. Like, you know, and not uh, making your car lighter and all that type of stuff. But I have to give this, and I have to shout out to my boy, Joey Fisher. He was right. Like, the stock class is banging. Like, I, there's, like, all these young guys racing in it. It you know I I watched like all I'm thinking I'm watching these Florida guys down there and a lot of Puerto Rican guys came out because they do a lot of um, carpet racing down there and I'm like I want to see these guys battle against the Midwest guys and I want to see them battle against the SoCal guys so we can have some seriously good stock racing here and okay I am not an enemy of stock no more I still think it's pink pinions but I, I'm liking it I like it I like it it's definitely a great stepping stone. Go ahead, Kevin. I got you. I I have a weird feeling or either I might be completely off, but I find it weird that there's guys getting paid in stock racing. I agree with you, but and, it just again, is what it is. And again, it goes back to trying to be inclusive for everyone. Um, so we've been playing around with names on group chats and stuff like that. So let's start at the bottom. I do think, and I think on road does it uh, quite well. There should be a spec motor for sportman level guys, guys that are going to the hobby shop should not be competing between the guy that's going to drop 200 bucks on a Trinity certified 5%. And the other guy that says, well, I worked all summer and 200 bucks is like uh, two weeks worth of pay. I'm not really sure I want to spend uh, 200 bucks in this hobby wing or weedy motor or whatnot. 100 bucks is enough for my mental state. And then they jump on the track at the same quality racer and they're completely off pace. Um, again, I'll refer to what we've been doing at home. For our stock class, it's a spec motor. Mm-hmm. Everybody has the same motor. Yeah, they're not always perfectly the same, but the Reedy motor is super durable and they're pretty cheap. So that, I, I do think that there's, they, sh- they should be like a, le- a way or a level to reduce costs oh, for actually the person that pays full pop at the hobby shop. And if you want to jump to ep- expert stock, well, either you have some sponsorship or you have talent or you have a bit more money that you're a bit more of a serious racer. Yeah. Go ahead, Tony. You your thoughts the, on that? Yeah, go ahead. I, no, sorry, just real quick. I agree with you 100% on that, though. I agree with you. That we- Man, I, 
I'll, I'll, I'm still on my soapbox, Tony. Tony, sorry about that. No, um, so at nationals, the four wheel thirteen five class was like a couple of uh, tenths off the the mod guys. Yep. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, so I don't know. Uh, as far as the nationals this year, that that tracks super high grip and it's really tiny. So unlike this past weekend, the Florida track is pretty big track for for one ten scale. Um, so the differences were larger, I think. Uh, but uh, I have a whole spiel on on the open stock slash novice stock, whatever pro stock, paid stock. Um, so like uh, Keenan started out the open or, or pro class, let's just say pro class. Uh, that would be your Cavaliers and Mayfields and stuff like that. Uh, there's a thing that I've only just seen here. It might be elsewhere. I don't know, but I've just seen it here where we call uh seventeen five spec mod. So the people that own the track and everybody around here, we've kind of been around for a, quite a while. So we remember the brush days and a 17, five. Now we've pretty much all agreed on is like a 12 triple mm-hmm. right around there back in the day. So we quit calling it stock and we call it spec mod 17, five or spec mod 13, five. Um, the only classes that get the, the stock tag are 21 five two wheel drive open and, motor yeah open motor but no the gearing is spec so you can only run like a whatever pinion and whatever spur why why do this because i don't know if you're locked on a on a gear ratio you're definitely going to have a bigger hp with a better motor as where with a cheaper motor, you can overgear it and try and be as fast ish. Sometimes we haven't seen that though. We've seen different motors win and different okay. speeds. So it seems to be working out pretty good. Um, I think when they ran the 21.5 in the J Concepts races a year or two ago, they had a handout motor. Yeah. I believe that motor, the, that Hobby Wing motor, was a lock timing motor. I actually I, raced that class. Yeah. It's a and fixed I, ratio per track. Yeah. So depending on how the jumps were, I, I raced that class at Beach RC and you know, Brent does everything super big. So uh, we had a huge jump <laughs> and they were testing to make sure that you were able, able to do the jump. Yeah. But uh, it was, everybody has uh, had a motor that were already teched by uh, Ron Schur and uh, they, they gave you a 32, 72. Yeah. And that was it. And that's like, so that's like our stock class here. Okay. Um, and then they do, so they do 21.5 and two wheel, and then they do 17.5 and four wheel. Oh. And you kind of think at first you're like, oh, that's going to be stupid. Dude, it's, it's freaking awesome. These, so when you start out in novice and then you make that next step, before they introduced these two classes, it was 17.5, two wheel, and 13.5, four wheel. Like the guys you see at the Nats. We have two Nash, two stock national champions that live here and race every weekend. And they run 17.5. So you're going from, hey, the RC is cool. I got, I've had a car for a year. And then you're racing these guys. And yeah. those guys never stuck around. So this... Uh, this stock class that we call stock now is a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Those are the biggest classes week in and week out. Now they get the new guy, you know, they get him through novice. He can drive around now pretty good. They move up to these stock classes and they race every week and they stick around, you know, they have three, four heats of each class every night. Interesting. And then we, we still have the, spec mod 17 five guys because that class has morphed into its own thing completely it's not mod and it's not stock 
So it's kind of in the middle. So that's my take on it. Uh, the track kind of, I proposed a 21 five spec class a couple of years ago when I began importing LRP stuff. And we never really got to that point where we had an LRP stock spec motor in that class, but he took those classes and ran with it Mm -hmm. and it's doing awesome. Yeah. Killer thing for tracks. You see, we do, we do something very similar to that, but with a spec 17.5 really fixed timing motor. So it's probably as fast as your 21.5 roar motor, but that's what we did. We had so many newbies that wanted to start racing. Yeah. But what's the best way to start racing? It's two wheel drive buggy. And our mm-hmm. only option here was mod. So yeah. put an eight five in a two wheel drive buggy. Yeah. These yeah. guys are not going to have fun. No, no. So by having our, our spec class, if I can say, there's a bunch of new people that would have not have stuck around driving mod because it yeah. sucks. Yeah. So we now have four four heats. Last Saturday we had four heats of uh, open four wheel drive, three heats of uh, two wheel drive mod, and three heats of uh, spec motor. So it's thriving. And the worst thing is we have two guys that race the same car in the boat classes after three race, one's top five, the other stop eight. <laughs> yeah. So it just goes to show that people can race these cars and mm. go at a decent speed, you know? Yeah. And it provides that, that step that we had years ago. So uh, a brushed stock motor was so slow, you know, I mean, just painfully slow. You weren't making jumps. You weren't, you had to totally change the way you drove and we missed and we left that step behind somewhere. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like early 2000s, like 20, well, not in early 2000s, but I mean like 2010 or something like that kind of just disappeared all of a sudden. Nobody knows where it went, but it, it disappeared. So I, I, I've seen these classes and I've seen the people come and I've seen them go over the years and they stick around with these classes now. Mm-hmm. Tires last forever. Like it's a real learning class. Learn your cars, learn how to drive. It's a process, you know? I mean, you hand somebody off the road a car like this and they have no idea what they're even looking at. You know, it's a lot to absorb in just a few years too, you know? I would agree there. I would agree. I, I, and and you know what? Um, I think if you're really competitive in spec mod, which would be the stock class that we watched yesterday, I think your goal should be to run mod, but at the same time, I mean, if you kind of want to stay there, you kind of stay there. Like it, maybe your goal isn't to be a pro at the same time, but it would be good to see people, more people moving up. But I'm kind of to the point where I just don't think we're going to see that because it's just. Well, and how, how much room is there for paid guys? No, there isn't much room at yeah. all. So, yeah. But so, they're getting paid. They're getting paid in stock. So are they going to stick in stock? make no, they're getting paid semi pro money. what's what's getting paid though are we talking 200 bucks a month <laughs> you know uh, i yeah. mean i don't know i don't know what it is but i don't think it's i don't think it's getting paid per se i mean yeah you're right it's you not know living wage. it's not like a salary yeah, it's, I mean, it's commission off motor sales and, and yeah, stuff like that that they get that's not a life ambition i don't think yeah, yeah. Okay, All right. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, um, once again, we had the veterans show up. Uh, I guess we have to say, uh, I'm going to start off with Dakota Fan. How good is Dakota Fan right now? Man, uh, coming off an impressive, dominant win at AMS, comes here to Beachline on carpet, and we're all like, hey, is he going to be good on carpet? Oh, yep, he's good on carpet. He's good on everything, it looks like. The, yeah. the Phenom is incredible. TLR kind of... Like for me, TLR is the most improved brand. I know you're AE stalwart, uh, Kevin, but I have to give TLR. They went from 2018 when I saw the Nationals, like I thought they were going to be dead, to like we are now back as TLR and yeah, hold our beer. We are here. <laughs> and, and you know what? The Their two wheel drive buggy is really renowned to have decent grip on dirt. Mm. but these guys took it to the carpet and they had a dialed setup. <laughs> they were, yeah. 
they weren't messing around. Cav was almost as fast as Dakota and uh, Brendan was doing really well. So they definitely had really good cars. Mm-hmm. If, if I had to pick a team before the race, they probably, I don't know, <laughs> maybe third or fourth pick. Seriously, because at, at the Vegas race, I don't think anybody got more packs than Cavalry in practice, dude. Every time I looked at the track, he was on, he was on the track and, and Gil was there and Frank was there. The whole team was like grabbing his car. They would change stuff, put it back out. I mean, it was just like they were, they were making the best use of every hour per day and they still didn't quite have the pace, but, yeah, they showed up at this track with pace. I mean, holy cow. Mm-hmm. Dakota's two-wheel lap times, dude, were like, what? <laughs> he had the fastest lap times until Orlowski in the last couple mains in four-wheel. Like, holy cow. Yeah, amazing. I'm, I, I'm agree. Like, I'm agreeing with you, man. TLR won this. Like, I'm sorry. You yeah, had, they killed it, yeah. Yeah, you had... um. Ben came second in four wheel drive, Cavalari in third. Here we, I know we, we saw, you know, everybody's questioning Cavalari, but I'm telling you now, like his, he's getting it and he's going to be fast, ne- faster next year and winning stuff. It took him a year to figure out the S works. And now he's, and like you said, they got the whole team focusing on these guys. Yeah. And that's what matters. And just look, Brandon done well. So, yeah, me, I, I thought, I honestly thought we was going to see, like, the Europeans just come in here and dominate X-Ray and Schumacher, but super surprised mm. at TLR. I didn't think that would ever happen. Okay. I was expecting Spencer to do, to be a bit more up front. He, he did well, but I was expecting him to be everywhere. But he's been where yeah. he's been all year, and that's third or fourth. He's been third or fourth at most races in, in eight scale. Which isn't bad. No, it isn't. For him, he wants to win, obviously. You know what I mean? He's a racer. He wants to win. But he's been the most consistent racer this this year. He's had constant... He, he's not won, but he's had constant top threes. So I was expecting Ty to do yes, better, too. Me too. Especially having X-Ray, X-Ray on carpet is rocket ship. I don't know if it was tires. I don't know if it was having driven on carpet in I don't know how long. I was curious to see him where he ended up well I, it i just think what really ended up seventh and four-wheel drive and then yeah. um let me i'll, I'll find it uh, yeah, i got it here he, and then he was he, it was seven he finished seven two-wheel drive and seventh and four-wheel drive so i think my biggest surprise here was also mayfield had to bump i believe from a b main to this race as well in two-wheel drive i think he had a bump with brent and to two-wheel drive from the B main, yeah, four wheel drive. I think was Yorn and yeah, was it Ty? Oh, let's see. We could. Was see. it Lee? No, oh, it was Lee. Was it? I think so. Okay. Let me find it over again. I know Yorn bumped in the B, but I can't remember who else. Uh, Yorn was. Ju- uh, they don't show it here. Okay. Uh Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, as Jordan and Ty. Ty, yeah. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Uh, Ty, not a big carpet racer. He's been to this race before, though, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, he was last there year. last year. Yeah, he was yeah. there last year. Um, I, I think X-Ray is probably the team that I'm most shocked at this this weekend. You know, I thought they'd be up a little higher. And with the team that they bought over, Martin was extremely, like, dude, for that guy, he's older now. And he's still really good. Like, you know what I mean? And even though Yorn did not make the two-wheel drive, man, his drive in four-wheel drive, like the last A3 was amazing. Like, that guy's so fast. Like, another jack of all trades. Um, So it's, it's just, and but I mean, we just can't count out, like I always say, the, cre- the cream rises to the to the top. And here we have, like, Cavalieri. And, and well, we have to say Dakota Fend is a, is a, is a veteran now as well, you know, and these guys are still just winning or doing well. I mean, it's going to be hard. I mean, obviously, at Brock, Brock came second. This is a race that he won last year or the overall, so another good result for him. But these veterans in America, man, they're just 
these guys that race eight scale and ten scale, I think they're showing that they're still gonna be the fastest guys when it comes to ten scale, like just guys that do ten scale specific. I think my personal opinion. They're racing all the time, so. Mm. I, I do think that at some point, if you have enough mechanics, enough help, you just need to race. It doesn't matter what. You're just trying to learn and practice different style. And as long as you have a remote in your hands, it's good. Yeah, a lot of these guys can just take a car and put it on the track. And in three laps, they're turning hot laps. Yeah, that's I've amazing. Seen it. It's They'd amazing. probably be as good as uh, in the uh, on-road and uh, yeah. oval racing. Yeah. It's yeah. just amazing, man. And I don't see them going slowing on anytime soon. I mean, Kevin, I mean, Mayfield maybe is not on his 10 scale program as much, I, but he's still making these mains. And I think whenever, whatever he decides to do for 10 scale next year, he'll just come back out swinging. But I, I, I have to give it to like Kev and, and guys like Jordan Newman, because he's a veteran and, and, and these guys. And I'm a bit surprised at, People like Dustin Evans. I always say this. I don't know. I'm not getting on him. I just it's just one of the ten scale guys that does ten scale early, and I just he, I just feel he should be higher up at these races. You know what I mean? He should be in the top five at least. And I don't even think he made the four wheel drive main. So a little bit disappointed for him. But man, are we seeing a four way rivalry here between these companies? Because you have you do, but think about it. You have AE. Versus TLR in America, right? Then you no no listen listen. You have AE versus TLR in America, and then you have Schumacher versus X Ray in in Europe. And now Schumacher is coming over. I want a four way rivalry here. We have it. We have well, there's there's always been a Schumacher X Ray rivalry. So yeah. that that doesn't need to be fertilized. It's already <laughs> it's already growing sure. like a weed. I heard. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Brock is gonna start a rivalry with Schumacher versus whatever other brand. The other the whole rest of the world. Yeah. yeah. But I mean now yeah. that they're coming over there and AE and TLR are competitive on this surface, are we gonna see this are you gonna see these four companies go at it? It all depends on distribution. Sorry, I cut yeah. you off on that. It all depends. I don't think AE or TLR is distributed as well in in Europe. And X-Ray is doing pretty good in the US, but I don't think Schumacher has the same... It has a good potential, but I don't think it has the same yeah. industry backing or distribution or no, network. Not at, not at all. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a... I think it's driven by the events. Um now we don't have the EOS that's uh, really detrimental to our viewing pleasure, I think. You is know, it done? I, the EOS is done or just for COVID? Well, you know? There's problems with the organizer and okay. venues and things like that. There's still some residual COVID limitations going on over there. I, I heard the last on-road carpet race they ran two or three weeks ago. Uh, they had to get sanctioned by the FIA mm. in order to be able to have the attendance of all the racers. Because it's indoors, yeah. Yeah, so there was some sort of crazy stipulation there. If they didn't get a sanctioning body to back them, they wouldn't be able to have more than like 20 or 30 people there. So they had to do that. And so they're still, you know, we're not quite – hundred percent out of the restrictions. So I think, I think the rivalry, this would be a good start to some sort of series race, but it's hard to do that with international people on one continent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think it, I think it delivered what we were talking about those kind of like a carpet worlds you know yeah but you know what real quick kevin before you go on i know i know a lot of the usa guys like go into eight scale tracks are warriors oh well that track's been there the same for 20 years this eliminates that like yeah so we should it would be great to see more americans go over and when things are or clear to go back over to europe and race they can't we can't use because I know people's going to say, oh, the world is going to be hard because it's in Spain and they're used to that track and it's a different track, which is the truth. It is. It's completely different from anything we see in America. But the carpet takes all of that out of that. And 
it kind of creates that equal field. And it would be good to see these guys go over there. Where carpet racing is big, like really big, and um, go race over there. All right, Kevin, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't have anything to say for once, so I was just listening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's just good to see, man. I I I'm I was so shocked. Like honestly, I did not expect TLR to be as good as this. I mean, but I don't think anybody did. Yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> like like not to try and knock on them, but they did really well. Yeah. Oh yeah. I oh, was yeah. I was shocked though. I mean, AE sent a pretty big contingent there. We had Cole Taller. There was no Aiden. Um, I talked to Aiden. I said, hey, dude, why aren't you at this race? And he's like, oh, no, I'm, um, I'm going to the race in Cleveland. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I think Tia, and then like Dakota goes into 2022, wins the last big Nitro race of the year, wins just like, he, like TLR goes into 2022 on a high note, period. And he had such a rough start to 21. Yeah. That's really good for him. He must have listened to us on the podcast. I know Barry Baker did. <laughs> He does. He was Does he say dumb shit again? No, he was like, <laughs> he, he was. You guys are crazy. Dakota led that from start to finish. Mayfield would have never. And he he likes to, he he listens to it. And then he, while he's listening to it, he's talking to me. So, um, but he enjoyed it. Man, he goes into. I think two racers go into twenty twenty two on a very three. I think you got Dakota fan who can win. I think he's showing that he can win anywhere if his car lasts and he doesn't fend himself. Mayfield is extremely hard to beat anywhere and i'm telling you guys and i'm a fanboy of his but i'm telling you that cavallari is figuring it out i'm telling you but that's the help of tlr the whole team you know what i mean that's that's what he needed and that's kind of not what he ha- i got in some flack for saying s works didn't have that but they don't like you said they have frank root there that can do the 10 skill stuff then they have what's the guy name um What's the gentleman from TLR does a lot of eight scale stuff? Ryan um... Dunford. Yep, Dunford there to help him out, and that's the the that's going to be key for TLR in the future. Yeah, they have the manpower. That's for sure. That is definitely for sure. That's for sure. All right. When they got, I think when they went back and uh, signed Cavalry again, that changed their intentions big time. Mm-hmm. You know, before it was mostly Dakota. Who else was big with them for a while? Um, they had uh, like Tanner Danny for a while, I think, but not that big. Yeah, I think when Mayfield ran him, he he play he he yeah. ran it and stuck around for a little bit after that. But yeah, it was pretty much. I mean, for the most part, of the pro ranks it was on Dakota's back every race, you know. So I think when they went out and and signed Cavalieri, that that really said like. We're, here to We're race. not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're here to race. Yeah. All right. Um, real quick, because I see Kevin's getting tired and it's getting later for us. Sorry. I have to, I have to um I have to comment on coverage. Uh my buddy Danny Paz and his buddy did this. I have to give them credit with what they were trying to do. The production was great. When you look at the replays of the video work, it was great, you know. But unfortunately, we was not able to witness he, he they fixed it on Sunday, I believe. But for like Friday and Saturday, just internet issues, which is something that happens all too often at one of these races. I don't know if they took their own internet, but I would like to see these, this group of guys go work with Dave's group of guys, and then they could make something really good at these race time races. And uh, I'm, I'm sure for next year, he's going to be planning to have his own internet and have better, better stuff because Danny does really good, like he's good, and he does good pictures and all that type of stuff. I want to take him to DNC with me, not to stream, just to take pictures. I I enjoy, I can applaud them for what they were they were doing. The coverage production was great. The internet was just uh, yeah. it was so frustrating because we, you know, I wanted to watch this race and you can't. And it's like I'm like oh, I can't watch that. I can't watch that. Like, you know what I mean? And they would kick you out. And then you're watching a qualifier from yesterday, and you're like, what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think the effort was there for sure. I mean. I think I think the effort, everything was there. They were just missing that last that last little cherry on top of having some killer internet. Yep. How about you, Kev? You know what? I'm gonna. I know you guys wanted something better, and oh, uh, we wish internet didn't screw up and whatnot. But it takes so much, mm-hmm. so many people. I, I wrote in the, our pre uh, 
pre-show. It takes a village to be able to do quality content. And if the internet starts sucking, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And while you're trying to do content, something else is happening. Um, It's difficult. Like there's, and that's the the last thing. And you're going to love that one because I'm going to tee you up. I don't think a track should be responsible to be creating content because it's so much work outside the organizing, outside of this, outside of that. There should be independent media that would be able to cover everything. And I know this rocks your boat, but it's still, there's no way. But the, the people there shouldn't be responsible. They were. They were. There was because... independent media coverage. Like Danny was working on his own. The only okay. thing the track had was the internet. Like, and that's what they were using, and that's what messed up. He should have had a backup, but that's what happened. He was independently there, but he was not like obviously. He's just he's doing the streaming because he streams a lot of races in Florida, and he uh, if he was it was just him and his brother, I believe. And then obviously they're working with TJ and then guys to do interviews, but they needed manpower. Like he needed to have like Jacob and Dave there. They needed two more people to do their job properly. And, um, and but I, one more thing. I, uh, I don't know if Lens does 10 scale pretty often. He doesn't. I think he did a pretty good job. It was a different yeah. pace than what Scotty does, but it, it ran pretty flawlessly. I think. Yeah. I like Lance. I, we just got to get his pronouncing uh, clinic right and all the European names right. Um, Orlinsky. Orlinsky, yeah. <laughs> but he probably gets so excited. Um, that was an ongoing joke between me, Michael, and his dad all weekend. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I, I applaud Danny and his efforts. WRCE, check them out. I think uh, they'll definitely be even more prepared for next year, but what they were doing or attempting to do with the internet was good. It was really great. Lance needs to get him up to uh, these race time races and work with Dave, and then we can get that yeah. production quality that we want, you know? And I, and I totally agree on the, on the, it needs to be an independent, mm-hmm. uh, like news and content of the event for sure, because that's definitely not the track or the RDs. Oh, I agree there you know, they don't sign up for all that, you know, and we've talked about, you know, the absence of Neo buggy and, and mm-hmm. all that. So it, for, for people that are in to the RC and want to see what's going on everywhere, it's absolutely necessary, but it's a huge bite to take for someone, you know, it's cost and, money. It costs money too. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It costs money to send people there. I've seen just, what Neo Buggy used just to charge. His camera, just his camera and mice and all that jazz. Uh, he had uh, several thousands of dollars oh, uh, in equipment. Yeah. Danny Danny's really good yeah. though at what he does. Uh, and I've seen what, what what Phil used to charge to go to races. So it, it isn't cheap. You know what I mean? But he has to you have to go get your co- your your cost paid and you like I mean, people need to make money at this. If they don't make money, they're not going to do it anymore. So and that equipment yeah. ain't cheap. You got to exactly. replace it. You break it. You lose it. Man, don't worry. I I just Danny's. He. I just want to see. But you have this is the thing. There are other options to having a full live RC crew there. There are other yeah. options that can be used and and cheaper. This oh. is pretty good for two guys. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna couple, finish this off on two questions. Uh. And I kind of touched on this i'm still lost at how like the guy mattis benin 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 can run stock and expert and and pro you can't explain it to me but i still don't see it because it's kind of like intermediate an intermediate guy running pro at one of these races pro and intermediate but can we just run over that real quick how he's allowed to run uh stock and mod or well i think it goes back to what kevin was saying about stock guys getting paid Mm -hmm. um in the expert classes, which he ran at expert 13, five, four wheel, that's considered semi-pro semi-pro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These guys have sponsors right. basically. So there's a, it's, it's kind of in limbo right now in America where it's kind of like, like we talked about DNC. If you run intermediate, you can't run pro, mm-hmm. but at this race you could. So it's kind of, 
you know, it's up in the air. Mm-hmm. But what would this guy be running in Europe? Would it be running mod? There would because be no there's stock. no really stock. He, yeah. What they, did you say, Keenan? I just, I don't think there's any stock. Like, yeah. Like that. There is. They do 13.5 two wheel and 10.5 four wheel. Mm. Um, Trish actually won that uh, EOS championship or, you know, whatever. But it's very small and it was fairly new when they started doing it and then COVID hit. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But yeah, he would be running mod for sure. And he made, what did, did he make the four wheel main? Yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, dude's legit. You know. Yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't even know who he was. But slow. yeah, he's Rocky, legit. Uh, somewhere, <clears throat> hey man, carpet racing. It's big. Just doing it out there in Eastern Europe. All right, and <clears throat> I know because this was a question that you had on the pod, Kevin, and Max answered it, and I wanted to turn his because he's much. I think he's a bit more in touch with it. Uh, is mod dying? Yeah, for sure it is. You can you can look at the live RC statistics, you know, that they put out every month or so. Um, and actually, this was a drill that that I put Jurgen through when we were importing LRP to try to display to him how important stock racing was over here, like. Europeans don't even, they don't even understand it. Like mm. why, why, you know, but over here, it's about 70% of the overall entries is spec racing, whatever class it is. It's a spec motor class. Mm. So your open classes are, yeah, I would probably say 20% because you have about 10%, maybe that's novice or something or another class. So, um, yeah, it's, it's huge mods. Mods been fading for a long time. Once the track st- started going to high grip sauce, warmers, all this nonsense, that was like the last dagger almost in modified in my opinion, because not only is the car hard to control, but now you have this huge variable of tires where before, as long as you had, you know, whatever the tires are, the ellipse or, you know, one of, if you had one of those tires when we were running tread, you were good. Once the tires broke in, you were good. But this whole new saucing thing just, I think it, I think it put another dagger in modified. You know, I have, I've raced for almost 30 years. Next year will be 29 years. I have exactly 0% want to run mod. Mm. just doesn't appeal to me it's too it's too much work for the amount of enjoy, enjoyment for me you know i don't enjoy it so the spec stuff is a little bit better because you can show up and still have a good time but you don't spend as, as much effort i guess you could say mm-hmm. but i think it's on dirt mainly Maybe mods doing well on carpet or turf. Um, but once in a while I'll pop into a track that I know or somebody I know that's club racing that night and I'll go and check it out. And it seems like the mod entries are really small. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, but I get it. I get it. Um, and, uh, it's it's like it's like me when I was trying to tell JQ like we need to make a truggy. He's like ah oh, truggy sucks. I'm like yeah, but it, it's like in the biggest market and people want it, yeah. so you got to do it. Exactly. You know, it's hard. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, I think we we plan to do this for hour. We've been doing this for about an hour. It's getting late. Um, anything? Any final thoughts before we before we move on? You can go ahead with this one, Kevin. Your first. Appreciate it. Uh, it was a fun race. It was a world class facility. Uh, the layout was amazing. Um, everything was just top notch. So I'm I was so excited to watch it. I want to try and make it next year. So that, that's it. I, and I know the COVID restrictions are much harder in uh, Europe. So I hope the guys are are going to be able to go back home without too much uh, too much issues. But it, it was amazing. 
it was a blast to watch. I hope the guys can keep uh, doing good content like that. And the track is just really, really amazing. So I'm really looking forward to try and make it next year. See, I would I, go ahead, Tony. You can reiterate uh, your final thoughts on the uh, race. I just, I totally agree. Yeah. When they opened the doors there on, what was it Thursday or Friday for practice? I was like, wow, this place is, <laughs> I've seen it before. I've seen it in the videos, but I think they covered it a little bit better this year, even than last year. I think the camera panned around. You actually got to see the mm-hmm. facility. They walked around even sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. I think that's important for the track. So people can see like, what's the place like, you know? And yeah, awesome place. I think they could have a huge carpet race there international like this, but maybe open it up to 300 entries or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they can do it. I think they ran it good enough. They were they done on time. More. They were done early. Yeah, yeah. It was it was good time. But I think they're I think they're keeping it, you know, keeping it under control mm-hmm. on purpose, which is good. Um it was fun to watch, yeah. It was it was cool. It was fun. Uh I wished I went now. <laughs> yeah. Uh I, I enjoyed it. It um I'm liking carpet. Uh, two races that I want to go to that are ten scale are this race. And masses of dirt because that's co- completely different, and I, I think the vibe there. But I think you're just I think next year you're just going to see more uh, participate international participation. And yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to see a lot. Like you might see people like Coelho and Ronafalk and these other fast carpet guys coming over to compete, and that's just going to make it even. Any time that these guys get to race together, I'm all about it. Anytime that the international and Americans and anybody else get to race, I love it. And we need more of it. So kudos to everybody at the facility, to Danny Pez, Lance, uh, everybody that put this on. I thought it was great. Um, And thank you because it was all free to us too. So we can't even complain about that. The only thing was the internet. (laughs) But uh, And I just think think people need to kind of see that inevitability that – Carpet is gonna be what keeps ten scale alive and keeps takes can take like look what they do in England. They put a, a race right in a in a in a mall. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can yeah. do that with carpet. So yeah, huge. Yeah. The biggest mall in Europe. Yeah. yeah, huge, huge stuff. I think most of the people that cap on carpet don't run carpet or they never tried it because once you leave all that tire nonsense behind and put on, you take tires out of the package mm-hmm. and you bolt them on your car and you go to the track. Who, who's going to hate that? Who's uh, going to miss grinding tires? And <laughs> you know? I, I would never be doing that stuff. Anyway, you would grind oh. that stuff down for me. No. no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's inevitably going to grow period. Yeah. Sweet. Well, that's wraps. I think that's it. I think we did a good chat. We did a great discussion on that. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Tony, for your time. I greatly appreciate that. Hopefully, we do this some more. I think this might be our 10 scale crew for doing 10 scale <laughs> stuff, which is great. <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I want to obviously have to say shout out and say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. Thank you for all the love. Please leave a like, sub, uh, reviews. Anything that you can, leave it for the NNRC podcast. Also, leave that for my boy, RC Kevin. He's trying to grow his brand as well. So hit that Thank you. like sub button. Uh, Tony, just because you're coming on her and you're giving us your time, please go check out Clinic RC. I'm Clinic. You do this for you. www.clinic. Get, get, and tell people what you offer so people can uh, hit you up. That's clinicrc.com. Mm-hmm. We're on Facebook, Instagram website uh we just do lots of cool stuff we make carbon fiber stuff lots of titanium anodized titanium turnbuckles screw kits um tools wings all kinds of stuff so you just have to check check out the website we're adding stuff all the time we just this week uh, sealed our deal with maxima let me see which way to put that in here and if you race for any length of time you know what this stuff is it's magic, absolutely magic. So, yeah, we just have all kinds of uh, parts that we make ourselves and then stuff that we sell also. So, yeah. And if guys, you- his, uh, his titanium screws are awesome. The X fits really well, nice and deep head. 
That's what she said. Um, <laughs> those screws are really, really good. So go and check them out. Yeah. And thank you, Tony, man. It's not Kaylee or K-Link. It's Clinic. Kaylee. <laughs> um, oh, I, I seriously, when I saw that Orlowski was a team driver and all that stuff, I was convinced this was a European brand. Yeah. That's the reason why I put a flag, American flag, on the Facebook page. There you go. Because you go. I had so much inquiries from Europe, and they would be like, oh, the shipping's like $30, you know? I'm just in Spain. And I'm like, well, I'm not just in Spain. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. yeah. All right. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to all the patrons of the podcast. We can't do this without you guys. We greatly appreciate your support. And, of course... Thank you to all the awesome sponsors of the podcast. Remember, showing the sponsors some love shows the podcast some love. They are Mayako, Beach RC, High Tech RC, Tech, Techno RC, TNR Fuels, Lugs Racing Tires, JQSM, Sun City RC Raceway, InvisibleSpeed.net, Donathan RC Charge Leads, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, Racecraft USA, ShopJTP.com, RCGP, House of RC, check out the sold out app, Check out RC Kevin. Check out Clinic RC guys. Um, I think that's it. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody before we uh, sign out here? Thanks. It was fun. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll do it uh, again. Kevin's falling yeah. asleep here. It's been no, I was uh, I was expecting Tony to talk, so I I was coming him off. So I was waiting uh, for him to talk. Hey, this is <laughs> yeah, good though. It was okay, good. Well, we, we didn't cut each other off much. This, this bye, podcast. guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Kevin. Remember, everybody, Nitro's the glory, e-buggy pays the bills, and 10 scale stock, apparently, in America. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. Bill. Hey, Bill. Yeah, pays a bill. <laughs> I am sorry. I'm, I'm not apologizing, but I'm apologizing to the Pink Pinion crew. And, um, yeah, it was good. Let's hope this race grows, and let's hope we get to do some more 10 scale stuff here in the future. I think well, that's it. Lefty, Tony, and RC Kevin. We guys are out, man. We guys are out. See you guys later. Have a good one. See ya next time. Thank you for listening to the No Name RC Podcast. We greatly appreciate all the support and love from you, the listeners. Without all of you, none of this is possible. Special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. If you wish to support the podcast further, you can at patreon.com forward slash NNRC podcast. As a patron, you will receive early releases, special content and patron only giveaways also please follow us on facebook instagram and our website www.nnrcpodcast.com remember nitro is the glory but e-buggy pays the bills if you aren't having fun it doesn't make sense and if you ain't grinding you're sliding lefty out Nitro is the glory. Nitro is the glory. Nitro is the glory.
that wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs>